Right. Um, so the parish meeting. Yes, yeah, so this is a meeting, in fact, when the whole parish, all 3,000 souls, can come and elect their church wardens, um, whereas the APCM really have to be on the electoral roll to vote. That's just a technical thing. So, um, but uh, Roger is standing again for church warden, and um, many thanks to him for standing. And he's been proposed by Martin and seconded by Sally. Um, can I see a, uh, a a wave if you're if you're agreeing that sh he should stand again? Everybody wave. Lovely. Oh, that's very good. Thank you, Roger. Um, the second we have two church wardens, um, and the second one we uh, at the moment have a vacancy. Um, but I just want to thank the person who's stepping down after um, after six years service, Christine. Um, Thank you so much for all that you've done uh, over the last uh, so many years. And I wonder if you just want to go outside your front door and, uh, and, and have a look and see if you can find anything out there. Uh, so you just, we'll wait for you. We're not going anywhere. You just nip out and uh, see if you can find something outside your front door. Right, now she's gone. I'll show you. <laughs> uh, we bought her this mimosa. Uh, many people contributed to uh, to lovely uh, presents and things, uh, and so we were able to buy her this mimosa, which is what she wanted. Uh, and um, uh, and we've there's also a, a gift voucher in there for a garden centre, um, because if you give Christine money, she'll only give it away. So we've given her a gift voucher um, as well. So that's just so you know uh, what she's got. And um, is she back yet? That's the question. Oh, and here comes Maggie and Zoe. Uh, and just so you know, I'll wait for Christine to come back. Um, and just so you know, um, we have a vacancy for a church warden. Um, there were people who we were very interested in who we asked, but they have things going on um, at the moment. So it's possible that we could appoint someone during the year or we could appoint someone next year. And we're hoping that, um, yeah. And that in the meantime, Roger and Christine, we've all discussed in the standing committee how to, to proceed with one warden, but it's okay. Lots of churches are like this. It's not a, it's not a crisis or anything. Um, Christine, did you find anything? Yes, still... <laughs> that's uh, absolutely incredible. Whether somebody knows something that I may have said, but I did yeah. have I did have one of those trees, and sadly it died on me this winter. <laughs> <laughs> did you know that? Uh, well, yes. Yeah, so somehow, some person, somebody knew that. Yeah, yeah. So oh, um, we oh, yeah. extraordinarily <laughs> clever. And um, no, I, I, I'm absolutely delighted. It was one of uh, John's and my favourite trees. The first one we ever had, we transplanted from Maggie Williams' garden at South Hill, uh, not South Hill, uh, Birch Hill. <clears throat> anyway, uh, just a hundred thanks. And I'm just opening a card as well. Well, lovely. We didn't manage to get it signed by everybody, obviously. So we'll- um... uh, Well, no. We'll do you a card with everyone's signature later when when we can? Yeah. We just oh, to... and, and the gardening tokens too. <laughs> That's just overwhelming. Thank well, you, Thank all you. I can say is that's what we think is a token of what you're worth because the, you know everyone has really valued all the things you've done over uh, so many years. You've been an amazing church warden, and um, yeah, just thank you for all that you've done. Um, we could unmute and give her a clap. Uh, if you want to unmute. Oh, can I just say something first? Yes. Uh, well, uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't have been able to do it without the support of so many people. And I mean, this church is just amazing, <clears throat> but it really has been a team effort. And, uh, um, you know, for that reason, I've really enjoyed it. And the whole of St. James family is my family. Most of my family are quite a long way away. 
and um, <clears throat> so St James has been my family and they've supported me actually through my own personal difficult times and uh, uh, I've just loved every moment of it well actually I won't say every moment <laughs> <laughs> I have literally shed tears over a, a little bit of the paperwork, including those wretched faculties and this B applications. But those aside, I, I, I've loved it. And uh, I obviously will go on supporting the church in any way I can, but thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Let's give, uh, give Christine a round of applause. I think Zoom may just mute very everyone. much. Then. <laughs> um, <unmute. laughs> oh, but thank you, Christine, and um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll manage somehow because because we're all together and we'll do it together. So that's good. We go back to our lovely meeting. Here we are, we've elected. So uh, here's the agenda uh, for today, apologies, minutes, etc. Uh, and inspired by Mark Watson, I've been playing with the PowerPoint. Oh, that was good, wasn't it? Um, I won't do it again because I don't know how. Apologies, um, do we have any apologies? Uh, you'll have to unmute, or if you see someone else waving like mad, then could you unmute and help them? uh because i won't be able to see all of you at the same time do we have any apologies margaret bully thank you romy holly have anybody sent any apologies early <clears throat> no we haven't had any apologies okay lovely okay so margaret bully's apologies um the next item is the minutes um, and although these have been sent out um, because I can do it, I will just share them on screen. Um, <laughs> and I know that that will be very small for you on a phone. Um, uh, so last year was half and half, as you remember. Well, firstly, it was in October um, because of the pandemic at this time of the year. And then it was only half and half, half in the church building and half on Zoom. Um, and as you can see, we elected Roger and Christine. We had apologies, minutes, matters arising, and reports of all the things that happened. Uh, Vernon asked his question about uh, charitable donations, which kept us busy till February. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, and we elected uh, Nigel, Angela, Angela, and uh, Pam to the PCC. Oh, and Justin. Oh, uh, is that right? I'm confused now. But anyway, that <clears throat> must be right because it says it here. And um, we elected uh, three people to Deanery Synod, Romy, Angie and Michaela. And uh, science people, standing committee. And um, Ind Nikki Jones was our independent examiner. And Roger thanked Rose. Christine thanked me. Uh, is that a true and correct record? Give me a wave if it is. Um, Lovely. For those of you that were there, super. Thank you. And um, there are uh, no matters arising. I think that's kind of a, a traditional kind of thing to happen at a at a at a, uh, a annual meeting. Matters arising, none. Um, so. Uh, what that brings me to now is uh, reports um, which have been circulated, uh, which have been made available in the church porch. Um, we're not going to read all of them, um, but I have asked uh, Nigel to speak to the treasurer's uh, report. And uh, so if Nigel wants to unmute and get himself ready, I will um, put the accounts up on the screen uh, Assuming that that might be some sort of help to you, Nigel. Thank you, Simon. Can you hear me? I can, yeah. Oh, brilliant. OK, I've managed to work that bit all right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, just a brief overview of the church's finances for, for last year. Simon's got quite a lot of the detail on uh, the screen. 
which you should have had in the reports that have been circulated. And there's also been a copy displayed for the statutory period in the church porch. Um, the year to 31st December 2020 just gone, obviously was a difficult year for everybody, particularly the church finances, but everybody else as well, I know in all sorts of ways. Um, we took quite a big hit in terms of our income. Um, so our total income has fallen by about £22,000 this year. It was just over 81,600 last year, and it's just on 59,000 in total in 2020, so a long way down. We're very fortunate that underpinning our income is the regular giving by bank standing order from the vast majority of our parishioners and church attendees, um, because without that, uh, our parish would be one of the ones that's got into quite deep financial difficulties um, and we have a very committed and very regular cadre of givers who continue to fund the church and I'm very grateful to them um, it's it's really a, a, a blessing that taken with the gift aid tax that we can claim back from the government on those gifts um, is what's kept us afloat and hopefully what will keep us afloat in the current year at the same time, our expenditure, I'm sad to say, hasn't decreased this year. It's actually pretty much the same as it was in 2019, partly because we were unable to cut a lot of our expenses back um, as the pandemic hit us in the beginning part of the year, um, but mainly because the parish share required by the diocese and the church generally has not decreased. In fact, we were actually scheduled for a slight increase in 2020. We've managed to meet this. Um, a lot of our other expenses did decrease, but they're only relatively minor. Things like church electricity, um, certain amount of service costs and things that we've saved by not being in church. So the net result of all that is that our expenses exceeded our income by £8,248, um, which is quite a reversal. Um, and then there was a further £900 um, extra cost that we had to bear from the church hall. We were fortunate to receive £2,500 as a gift from the parish magazine which has somewhat ameliorated that result but it still leaves us with a deficiency this year of six thousand pounds which we've had to take from from our reserves um, so where does that leave us now we have total general general reserves of forty five thousand of those uh, four, five, six, seven thousand are spoken for in terms of commitments to other things that we know we don't have available to spend. So that we have about thirty-eight thousand pounds in the kitty at the end of December 2020. Now, I'm predicting for 2021 that we're probably going to end up running a deficit of some eight or nine thousand pounds again. And that's assuming we can get back into church and get some of our normal fundraising and activities underway in the mid part of this year. Uh, without that, uh, we could have to have a, a very substantial rethink about how things happen. But for the time being, that should be the 38,000 should be sufficient to uh, cover the current year deficit and it should still leave us with sufficient funds to be able to fund the children and family worker project going forward. Now, the figures I've just run through in outline with you only relate to general fund. They don't include things like recreate the parish news or the children and families worker. I think there are separate reports on all of those. Uh, it's just to say that the money that we have received and continue to receive from those good people who've set up standing orders for the charity, uh, the children and families worker, um, we have that put aside in a separate pot um, so that it forms no part of these figures that I'm talking through because it is only available and will only be used for that project cost. 
And if for any reason that project doesn't go ahead, then we shall have to be in touch with everybody. So whilst I'm not uncomfortable with these figures, I do feel we're walking rather on the edge this year, probably closer to the edge than I've walked financially with the church in many years. Um, I'm hopeful that we can sustain this through 2021, no matter what, um, and look forward to a brighter future, probably for 2022. I'm very happy to try and deal with questions if anybody's got any questions, um, and I do hope that the APCM will vote to adopt the accounts. And finally, my thanks again to those of you who give generously and give monthly, particularly those who give by standing order and particularly those who've donated additional monies in the meantime. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, <clears throat> Nigel, uh, for all your work and for holding it all together. Um, just trying to find you there. Uh, I'm masquerading as Christine. Yeah, that's clever, isn't it? Um, uh, if, uh, if anybody's got any questions, uh, then do uh, now is the time to unmute yourself and ask. I've got one small. Yes, Jean. I did send a flower report, Holly. Was it not in time for the annual thing? Or am I just not looking at it in the report somewhere? It's in there, Jean. Where? No, it's in oh, there. I can't read, obviously. <laughs> yeah, it's after the churchyard report um, and um, the church hall report on the bottom, yeah. bottom right. There. Yeah. Have you found it now? Did that page fall out? That's the question. You might have had one without that page. <laughs> the rest of us got it. Um, any quest Any other questions for uh, for Nigel for accounts? Can I ask for someone to? Um... Oh, Martin. Yes. Are you uh, are you nominating? You need to unmute because I'm not so good at lip reading as I used to be. I propose we accept them. Thank you very much, Martin. That was my question. Thank you, Martin. Uh, any seconder? I can second it. Michaela. Oh, there was a whole host of hands went up seconding. <laughs> Michaela went up. So all those in favour, give me uh, give me a, a hand up in either in um, virtually or really. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much for all your uh, hard work um uh, on those accounts and being so clear and calm about them uh, nigel <laughs> <laughs> and as you say thank you to everyone for um uh for those who continue to support and sustain the ministry of the church which is fantastic um i would ask uh so i i know this this is another bit of a paperwork that kind of got missed i think i don't can't find the electoral roll report i know it's only five words Romy, would you just give us those five words verbally, <laughs> or seven, or however many it is? Ten words. On the roll, we have 124 people. We have lost one person, and that was dear Tom Wynne Edwards. We've gained no one this year, but I know there are people in the offing. They have to be here in the parish a little bit longer. And uh, happy days, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, uh, Romy. I'm not quite sure what happened with that, but anyway, that's good. We've we've sorted that. Um, I think that's all the reports I'm going to take. Uh, just checking all, all the other reports, uh, church wardens fabric report, deanery synod. They're all in the in the the um, they're all published. You all have them. Uh, so any oh, that's very fancy, wasn't it? Any other questions that? Uh, that we have do unmute yourself and uh, uh and ask a question if you have any for anybody who has written a report or not okay i did ask that uh, i sent out and when you sent out the original report 
that anybody who had, um, you know, that you should read through the report. And if you felt so moved, you could write a note of thanks to somebody um, during the, you know, for what they've done. Um, and I just wondered if uh, anyone had received any encouragement or encouraging emails or, or anything to say that they had uh, done that. Okay. Okay. Uh, I know this is the, the time of, uh, the, you know, the APC can be a time of thanking lots of people for all the things that they've done, which is really lovely. It is good to thank people. Um, and, uh, and I believe in it. Um, it's always difficult if you miss anybody out, because uh, that's always tough. And I think it's always done better in person. It's OK if you can drop flowers, uh, drop a plant off to somebody's house because you live down the road. But it's harder for me to uh, to leave uh, tubes of Smarties or something outside all of your doors. Um, so I'm going to wait uh, to do thank yous in a, in a physical way when we can meet again, because I think that will be much better. But in the meantime, know that I, we are very grateful as a church for all that one another does uh, to keep things going. Um, so that's the first half of the APCM. So we're going to move on to, the, to this little middle section when we're going to have our readings uh, and a talk and music and some prayer. So um, I'm going to ask Tony, first of all, to unmute himself while I find the picture for Tony to do his. There we are. There we are, Tony, you can have that as a background. <laughs> the, New Test the New Testament reading is from Acts chapter 3, beginning to read at verse 12. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety we had made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, although he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this, we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped clean. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Tony. And, um, yeah, so this happened after Peter and John went to the temple to pray, and they met a lame man on the way, and um, you can sing that along at home for the rest of the day if you want to. Um, and they saw a need, Peter and John, and they knew that the need was beyond them. They couldn't do it, but it wasn't beyond God. In fact, the need thought that the man had was just simply money. He was he was just begging, you know, but they saw Peter and John saw that the need, his need was greater. But it was way beyond them. But they reached up and asked God for help. They reached out to their fellow human with one hand and they reached up to God with the other. And this is the Christian way to love God and to serve our neighbour. And, and that's the thing that we're trying to do at St. James, you know, to love God and love our neighbour. This is the vision of St. James. I just want you to kind of try and remember what are we here? What are we doing? We're loving God and we're loving our neighbour. And so we want to pray and worship and serve our Lord Jesus Christ. And we want to care and serve and connect with our friends and family and community and village to reach up to God and out to our community. 
so this this annual meeting when we get a chance to look back at where we've been and what we've done and look forward to where we're going it's really good to be reminded of our core aim our purpose and our vision so if someone ever asks you what st james is about <clears throat> if they, someone ever says what's it for what do we do if you ever go why am i going there why do you go to st james to love god and to love our neighbor that's our vision love god and love our neighbor and now i'm going to ask karen for the second uh part of the reading second half um it's a reading from luke chapter 24 verses 36 to 48 while the 11 and their companions were talking about what they had heard jesus himself stood among them and said to them peace be with you they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is, it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. But everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he, he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in the name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are the witnesses of these things. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God indeed. Thank you, uh, Karen. So Jesus appears and in his new resurrection body, this body that can appear and disappear and yet can eat and drink, you know, and um, and of course, the disciples fail to understand who wouldn't fail to understand that nobody has ever seen anything like this before because it's never happened before. And yet Jesus points out the bits in scripture that foretold this. He explains it, doesn't he? And he tells them that they are witnesses. They've seen this stuff and it's their job to tell others. <clears throat> so our vision to love God and love our neighbor. I would have done a quiz. I would have like, asked for hands up if we were in church, but I'll let you off. So our vision to love God and love our neighbor also needs fleshing out in resurrection bodies. So what if we say we love God? What does that look like? And, and how would we love our neighbor? How do we do that? And, um, and so the annual report has shown us lots of different ways that we do that, that we love God and love our neighbor. But there are three particular areas that as a PCC uh, and as a leadership, we decided that we ought to be focusing on, that we were, th these are the things that need strengthening and working on to help us love God and love our neighbor. And hopefully these won't be new to you, but this is a reminder, okay, for all of us. So firstly, we want to strengthen our discipleship, to learn to speak about our faith and to encourage one another in holy living. So ever since the first disciples, the church has had to be humble and learn to, you know, Jesus had to point out the bits of scripture that they didn't, they didn't recognize, they didn't understand. We need to dig into scriptures and hold on to the truths that we find there. And also, like the church, first disciples, we need to learn to be witnesses, to tell people what we see, what we experience, what we know. Because, you know, if God is if God is love and having a relationship, <clears throat> having a relationship with Jesus is a good thing, you know, then we should tell others, shouldn't we? Because uh, you tell them if you'd found a good walk, <clears throat> you know, oh, I found, you know, in some part of the New Forest or oh, I found a new or a good pub. You'd tell other people, I found this great restaurant, oh, it's lovely, or a good shop or a good wool supply if you're into knitting, you know, so why can't we tell them about something else that's good? And we really have to work on this in order to fulfill our vision. 
um, we know that none of us are good. Well, I'm not good at it. And, you know, it's something we all need to work on. So it's one of our top three. The second thing uh, is to develop our services so that we might reach more people effectively and enable them to encounter God. And um, and I don't know how you, whether you've thought of it like this, but our worship services, whether they're on Zoom or in St. James or at the school or at the rec, they're both the shop window for the church where people literally come in and browse and decide whether to join us or not. But they're also our means of reaching God, of reaching up to Jesus like Peter and John did. So we need to work on these um, to make them more open and accessible to people who are coming in and browsing, as it were, but also deep and meaningful uh, for us to, to nurture us. And that's not easy, you know, to get that balance of being both things and no church finds it easy. So we're just going to keep on working at it um, to try and work on our services like that. And the third thing that we want to do in order to flesh out our vision, uh, we've already talked on about but about building our links with so many young people and drawing them into the life of the church, a life of faith in the church. Um, there were some graphs in the report um, and you might have been able to see that the number of children under 16s, that is, um, are less than a sixth of the congregation. And in fact, the under 12s would be even smaller, tiny proportion. We have so few children in Jim's Pilgrims and little Jim's, and yet we reach so many through Recreate and the school. And they are vital for the future life of the church. So um, we advertised last time for a children and families worker and we, we didn't get the right person. So we're advertising again, the advert is out um, and the closing date is um, May the 14th, I think, in the um, interviews of the week beginning of the 24th, something like that. Um, uh, it's on the website. And um, so we're tr so we're trying to find the right person to be a children and families worker to bridge that gap and really see young lives have a change life changing encounter with Jesus Christ. So our report shows the church is involved in lots of projects and charities and community work apart from those three aims. And I hope the report made much more explicit this year how much money we give to charities as well. But these three are simply the most urgent or the current need. You know, other things continue as well. Other plates are being spun, other areas of work. So we continue to attend to the pastoral care group, um, to, to the church hall, um, to recreate and the like. And in fact, one of the areas that we are progressing on really is our care for the environment. Um, we've got the Silver Eco Church Award. I have to show you the special wooden plaque that we've got. Uh, we've got the Silver Eco Church Award, but we're now engaging um, with others in the preparation for COP26, uh, which is in Glasgow in the autumn. Um, so, and there'll be more about that in the in the magazine and the news coming out. And Jackie Dale, I think, is heading up that for us, <clears throat> but part of a team in the church, because the environment really matters. Because we love God and we love the things that He's made uh, and given to us, and because we love our neighbor, we actually want them to live in a good, clean world, you know? So these things all add up together, don't they? So this year, we're gonna to continue to learn more about our faith and to encourage one another to be witnesses and evangelists. We will keep developing our services to refresh them so that they refresh us. And we will, with God's help, make strides in our children and families work. Because just like James and John, who needed God's help to love their neighbour. And just like the disciples who needed Jesus to open their mind to understand the scriptures. We will keep praying for with God, all things are possible. And without him was not anything made that was made. Amen. I'm going to play some music from Stephen. And uh, then Jean's going to lead us in our prayers.
So now Jean is going to lead us in our prayers. Jean, are you there? <clears throat> Do you want to unmute and lead in our prayers or not? <laughs> okay. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for all for all that you give us we pray for this world that surrounds us we pray for the people and events in our lives Lord this week many people have met with friends and relatives for the first time in months thank you that we were able to do this and thank you for all that families and friends mean to us Thank you that where love is, you are there, Lord. So in all these meetings, you are our life and our hope and our peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we think of the joy of families, so we think of the sadness of the royal family at losing Prince Philip. Thank you for his life of faith and service and we pray for the institutions of the country that they would be strengthened and valued Lord in your mercy hear our prayer Lord we pray for our politicians and leaders <clears throat> at this dangerous and difficult time. Pray for them that they might make the right decisions about vaccines and testing and reopening. We thank you for the scientists and those who have worked as advisors, enabling so much to happen. Thank you for the work of the NHS, for all those who have been on the front line in retail, in supermarkets, in delivery drivers, in all those who have continued to work through the virus. We pray for those who are financially uh, facing struggles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for those parts of the world where there are even deeper struggles with the virus and with their rulers and with peace. <clears throat> pray for those in Afghanistan worried about the withdrawal of troops. Pray for those in Myanmar protesting at the military coup. And we pray for uh, the Russian opposition leader on hunger strike pray for those in belarus still protesting for democratic elections for those in syria for those in the yemen in the sudan in ethiopia and for those in india facing overwhelming rising in covid cases Lord, this is all your world, and we pray for peacemakers and reconcilers. We pray for those who stand up for justice and for truth. And we thank you that your church is spread throughout the world, bringing hope and light to these places. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And closer to home, Lord, we pray for those who have lost loved ones recently, those who are bereaved. <clears throat> pray for those who are struggling with their health. 
and we pray for us as a community and as a church. May our love for each other be so strong that it overflows to those around us and those in need. May our love for you sustain us and strengthen us every day. And may our love for you and our witness for you be such a shining example that others also come to see and know your love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So now we're going back to the uh, second uh, half of the meeting, which uh, is the bit we all love, is the elections. Woo! Um, and uh, so the PCC elections looks like this. Uh, first up, we have Jill Dudley, proposed by Les and seconded by Romy. All those in favour, give me a wave or put your hand up. Fantastic. Uh, and next is Martin Seckham. All those in favour, uh, give me a wave. Yes, very good. Uh, the next person, I, Mike Botto. I don't have your form, Mike, as I have everyone else's forms here. Uh, I, I, for some reason, I've got no proposer and seconder. Holly, did you did you ever get a form out of Mike, or should we just get a proposer and seconder now? Yeah, we need a proposer and seconder now. <laughs> I'll propose, Mike. I'll second. Oh, that was Justin and Romy. Romy. Okay. Uh, all those in favour of Mike being on PCC. Thank you. And uh, then Christine Hensel. She may stop being a church warden, but she wanted to be on PCC. So um, <laughs> all those. And again, I don't have a form, Holly. Is that? Uh... Yeah, I don't have a form. Christine, I'll propose Christine, that's Brenda. I second. Oh, okay. Bad luck. Brenda and um, Sue. <laughs> Sue. Yeah. Uh, thank you. All those in favour of Christine being on PCT. Thank you. Uh, brilliant. Now, I just, I know traditionally we had three people elected every year. Uh, so I just want to show you with a position. Oh, sorry. Of course. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I just wanted to show you that. So uh, Nick Thompson Brown has stood down. There was some I was just spoke to him on the phone. There was just an amazing series of clashes every Tuesday night and he couldn't get to the PCC um, with his rotor. Um, but he just wanted to leave the a space available for others because he hadn't managed to get to to a lot of meetings. Um, so the vicar is always the incumbent is always the chair. Um, that's kind of non-negotiable, but we are appointing um, Mike and Nigel as vice chairs. Um, should I not be able to do it or should I think they can do a better job? That's probably true. Um, so they can help share the meetings. Um, and then this is what the PCC just looks like at the moment. I just wanted to show you. So um, I'm their ex officio and David is their ex officio, obviously. And so is Roger. And if we, when we get a second warden, that person will also be on there. And Holly is on there as well as the secretary. Uh, and then this is this year's four people. Last year, we appointed five people. But you'll see that the, the of the 2019 uh, people who came on board, actually, the other two have left or moved. So Michaela has moved over to be a PCC rep and uh, Nick Thompson Brown has stepped down. So it's a bit uneven at the moment, um, uh, partly because we've got three synod reps, partly just because that's the way it is. We could have 12 elected reps legally. We have enough on our electoral roll. We could, we could have 12 elected reps as alongside the deanery synod people and the, the wardens and, and incumbent people. Um, so it wouldn't be wrong to have four elected every year, I'm not sure if we want to do that, but I was keen to avoid having um, uh, a very small PCC, which would have happened because of the, the 2019 people um, being less. 
So um, just so you know, we have got a good number and a good spread and a good, quite a good spread of ages, uh, although we could always do with more under 40s um, or even under 30s, you know, would be, would be great, wouldn't it? So, um, uh, yeah, so that's that's how the PCC is at the moment. Um, what's our next uh, thing? Oh, appointment of sides people. So all those who currently are sides people, um, let's give them a wave if we want them to carry on. Thank you. I know you haven't had much to do in the last year, but thank you. Uh, and as it gets safer to open up, thank you for continuing uh, in what you're doing. And uh, it's a very important job. We were talking about it the other day at PCC, about the welcoming of people at the door and making sure that they are uh, they're OK in church. So thank you, sides people. And, uh... I only found the clapping thing after a quite a long time. So, you know, that's why it's only appearing on the last slides. Um, we also appoint the standing committee at this uh, meeting. Um, the standing committee is always the vicar, the church wardens, any ex officio people and at least two lay people. Um, so we've decided to go for three lay people uh, at the moment um, because uh, we wanted to keep Christine on, but also we wanted the youth of Holly. So um, sorry, Mike, you didn't count as the youth. We wanted the youth of Holly uh, to be on the standing committee. Uh, so that's the standing committee at the moment. All those in favour, give me a wave. Thank you. That's lovely. And uh, and every year we have to appoint the independent examiner. Uh, so Nikki has done it for, I think, two years now, has she? Maybe. Anyway, uh, she uh, is very happy to stand again. Um, and uh, so all those in favour of appointing uh, Nikki, if you think she's done a good job, give her a wave. Thank you. She is duly appointed. And uh, that means we've reached the exciting part. Any other business? OK, uh, give us your best shot. What have you got? Unmute and, uh, and, and ask me a question or make a comment. I'd just like to say thank you, Simon, for all you do to hold this whole thing together in these circumstances. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. That's really kind. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, thank you for your grace and patience putting up with me. In um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's just not the same, is it? But there you go. Uh, any other comments or questions or any other business? OK, well, I'll move on to uh, notices uh, just to say that the groups are starting back in the church hall gradually and safely. Uh, I think the brownies have been asked to come, but but not use the toilet, you know, go to the toilet before you come. And um, uh, and I know the, the cubs and uh, beavers will be will be in the garden as well. So things are beginning to open up for youth and young people. Vestry group, I think, is back on next week uh, at the church hall. Uh, so not this Sunday, but next Sunday. Um, Sally's house group uh, restarts on Wednesday. Coffee and chat will continue on Friday. Um, I haven't quite worked out about Wednesday evenings yet. Um, I just need to see how much time I've got. Um, and then next Sunday is a communion service in church and on Zoom. So hopefully the plan in the for going forward is that one week will be in church, which will be communion and on Zoom. And the next week will be on Zoom only. Um, and we'll do that alternate uh, weeks for a few weeks to come. So if you want to be in church next week, uh, do let Roger know. Oh, Roger's away. Let Holly know. Um, <laughs> then we'll be able to to, to sort that. Um, and book the church of eight, the 8th of May into your diary so that you can help out with the church. And although this isn't Romy's photo, uh, I just wanted to show you what uh, what some people have been doing this week. Um, they decided to get closer to God 
and uh, been repairing and and re finishing the the bell coat and the uh, amazing spire bit. So thank you to everyone who's been working on that. Um, now, I think that's it. Uh, so uh, we're going to have uh, one more hymn. Oh, Debbie's, Debbie and Simon have got their hands up. Do you want to say something? Unmute yourself and say something, or are you just voting? No. Maybe I can't get you. I was just voting. <laughs> it's okay. I have no idea how you get people to put how you get to put your hand down. Is Me neither. No, never mind. That's fine. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you, now and always. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you very much for coming to our annual meeting. and. Um...